So when we walked into the tide pools in this creek here, there's tons of salmon coming up it. And he's trying to trap some right down there. One on. Oh, she caught one. Come on. Come on. Okay, so we're trying to cast out 45 degrees from where we're standing. That to make sure the fly lands past the sinker. We're using about four feet of leader, three to four feet, and then letting it drift down without catching bottom like that. But letting it drift down, keeping some tension on the line, on the fly line, so that the rod tip, if it ticks the bottom, you can kind of feel it pop, pop, pop. It's like a definitely a tick on the bottom. If it's a fish, it just gets heavy. Um, it just kind of stops and the rod tip bends. So the rod tip will bend as it's ticking the bottom, but when it bends and just holds there and you didn't feel a tick, that's probably fish. That's what we're finding today. And um, so we're using fluorocarbon leader. It's 30 pound test. And we're also using it as tippet between the weight and the fly, 20 to 30 pound fluorocarbon for sure. The fly line helps because you can actually see the fly line and it gives you an idea of where your line is so you're not wondering where your monofilament is. Um, also, what else? So it almost becomes a feel thing. Throw it out, give it time to sink. So it should be sinking to a good depth right about in front of you and then as it goes past, um, that's where I'll be watching the rod tip and feeling. So Dawn might have a little bit too much weight on because she's keeps getting hung up on the bottom. Or what we could do is step out in the water further. Although at the edge of this green water and this clear water, we can see reds, spawned out reds coming up that are very red, and they're fishing, they're running right there. Um, past that is where we're picking up our um, not spawned out reds. Past the, the green water, a little bit deeper than the reds that we can see along the edge here. So in this case, I think what I would do is I would put on one sinker and my fly, my Russian River fly, and go ahead and cast it out and see if I hit the bottom. Make a few casts, see if I hit the bottom. If I'm not hitting the bottom in a few casts, at least every caster, at least once or twice hit the bottom per cast, I'll go ahead and put on a second sinker. Oh, he's fine. Horse him up. Get him on the bank. Oh, oh. look up. If I'm drifting and I'm bumping the bottom all the time, I have too much weight. 
and I'm not going to be able to sense a fish well, I'm going to get hung up more easily. If I'm bumping the bottom once per drift, that's probably not quite enough. I like to bump maybe two or three times per drift. That depends on the train, of course, there's a lot of variability, but I think that's my guess. If I was to say what's working today, um, and honestly, we've lost 15 fish between us or 20 fish between us. How many fish have we lost? 20, 25? Maybe closer to 25 that we've just had on and lost. We've landed more than this, but we had several foul hooked um, that were hooked like under the fin or wherever that we let go. And um, a bunch of them that we didn't even get to the bank that were so big and so strong they just came off out there in the water. Um, we've seen three other fish caught here. And we've been here for three hours, four hours, three or four hours, and we've seen three other fish caught. Um, with all the people, and a lot of people have left. It was, you know, every 15 or 20 feet there was somebody, but so most of the people have left, and we've seen, anyway, I'm not saying that we're doing anything great, but what we're doing right now seems to be working. So Russian River Ferry is right there. There's the dock. One, two, three. There's a rock here, a big rock. I don't know if that's going to be here seasonally, but... Um, what we have found is as the fish come up this river here, they tend to stack up here where it narrows up. They tend to stack up along here, along this slower part right here. Red salmon checklist. Waterproof backpack. Stringer. Fish thumper. Um, bear spray. Binoculars, yes. Some bears will be close enough you don't need them. Other bears will be far enough away you still want to see them. Um, eagles, whatever. Bug net, a couple flay knives, knife sharpener, extra batteries for the headlamp. Got 30 pound fluorocarbon. Um, polarized glasses, some water. I've used this several times. Duct tape, gorilla tape, whatever. Some snacks just to get you through the day, and um, some extra warm gear if it starts blowing and raining. It get, does get cold. There's a neck gaiter and a head thing there. Of course, you'll have your rain jacket, um, firearm, and pliers also to get hooks out of the reds because these hooks get embedded pretty well, and they're hard to get out, especially if you're just trying to cut one free and you just want to get the hook out and let it go if you foul hooked it. Okay, so um, paper towels, trash bags, and this has some extra gallon zip lock bags for salmon fillets. Um, just extra paper towels. <clears throat> so we use a lot of these in the 3 sixteenths, or the quarter, I guess. This is probably quarter right here. And um, we have extra of those. We have extras of regular sinkers, too. These are less than 3 eighths. Forget the brand. There's some Japanese name though. And so Russian River Flies, of course. Got a bunch of those. Bring a hook sharpener. If you're using these, or if I'm using these, I'm going to use a little tie on um, yarn there. Okay, good. And in this one, I just keep a few extra lures for silvers in case we want to fish silvers, in case the silvers are running. And um, some more lead some more um, ties. Otherwise, I'm just using 30-pound test for the leader and for the tippet between the sinker and the fly. Okay. And that's about it. The waterproof backpack has made a world of difference when it's raining and raining and raining for hours and hours and your backpack gets soaked and everything inside gets soaked. You can put everything inside in plastic bags, but it's just easier just to have a waterproof backpack that keeps everything dry. Okay, good. What else is on my belt? Firearm, pliers, knife. So we keep a sh you know a fixed blade. It's about three inches long um, on our belts, as well as a wade staff. Don't forget your wade staff. Okay. The sun does come out once in a while, so take some sun protection. Um, obviously, you're wearing waders. You're going to carry your rain jacket or wear your rain jacket. And a rain hat with a brim on it is nice. Outdoor research makes a sombrero. 
Sunbrero, I think they call it, and I waterproof mine with Nicwax, and it keeps the rain off glasses, it keeps them off your shades, it keeps them off your face, keeps it off your face for the most part, and um, it's nice having that extra big drip edge rather than just a hood. Mm-hmm. The seagulls are like vultures here. The bears know if the seagulls are on the ground feeding, that there's stuff for them to eat. I just didn't want you to be in the water when she came down. Yeah, thank you. Found another. <laughs> 